Hey, Snackers. Are you a developer looking for better observability tools? Cisco's open source API observability tool called API Clarity has you covered. In Snack Minute episode 45, Matt and Kareem share the value API Clarity can provide and give you a demo. Hey, Snackers. This is Kareem Iskander. I'm a tech advocate with Cisco Learning and Certification. Hey, everyone. I'm Matt DiNapoli. I'm a manager of developer advocacy with Cisco DevNet. Welcome to episode 45 of DevNet Snack Minute. DevNet Snack Minute is your weekly 10-minute all-things DevNet where we talk about coding, APIs, or just some cool stuff that you might like to know. And the cool thing that we're going to talk to you about today is API Clarity. Matt is going to run us through a quick demo, and we're just going to discuss it. Matt, before we start, can we queue in I Can See Clearly Now by Jimmy Cliff? Um, I don't know if we have the license for that music cream, <laughs> so probably not. But I would like to point out, you're wearing a throwback uh, DevNet shirt. That's actually the 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 T-shirt that we uh, had and gave out for the first DevNet Create. It is. It is. Yeah. I, I unfortunately lost mine, or I'm not sure where it was. I did find a throwback from, I think this is one of the Cisco Live Europe shirts, maybe. We had like the the, the fading in and out one. So I'm um, excited to have a throwback DevNet, DevNet t-shirt day. <laughs> I got to say, this is one of my favorite, one of my favorite DevNet shirts. Well, and it's nice because it has API really big in the middle there. So, and we are talking about APIs today and uh, specifically a tool called API Clarity. Um, this is kind of a departure for Cisco uh, because what we're doing is we're putting out um, a brand new tool for developers that's open source and it's tied directly towards software applications and how they work. And that's the really exciting piece of it. And um, what they're calling it is an open source API observability tool. But I'll, I'll kind of give you a little introduction to the problem that we're trying to solve with the tool and then I'll, I'll show you guys a demo. By the way, I did not build this. A, a very distinguished team of engineers in our emerging technologies group uh, built API Clarity and and these and these slides. But it gives us a good setup for what we're going to be talking about here. So, uh, for those of you that have been introduced to Open API Spec, um, and for those of you that haven't, um, it's becoming the de facto way for us to document and build APIs. Um, it used to be called Swagger. It still kind of is called Swagger. Um, and so it's become a little bit more formalized around uh, a term called Open API Spec. And it's really just a way for us to document and then build APIs. Ultimately, we can see that the industry is moving toward cloud services and microservices architectures. Um, they're gaining popularity in the space. It's a focus within and outside of Cisco. And to build those things, we're typically using an OPI, open API specification. Um, this allows us to standardize on how we build and talk about APIs so that both humans and computers can kind of understand the capabilities of a service and use them uh, and interact with each other. And this is the really nice thing. We don't need to necessarily access the source code or other, or other documentation uh, beyond what is defined within the open API spec. Um, ultimately, it's building out interface files for the entire gamut, describing, producing, consuming, and visualizing RESTful uh, web services, which is what we talk about here at DevNet and DevNet Snack Minute all the time. And it allows us to build the client consumption portion and the server applications using generated code and for testing purposes, mock applications as well. So kind of hits us from um, the concept of design uh, through testing uh, to production and deployment. Um, now, some of the challenges that come along with that is that not all applications have their OPI, uh, open API specification available. So um, they're either legacy applications where people didn't really take the time to do that. There are external applications that we're um, that we're using that you know we don't have control over, and so um, we might not have access to those specs. Um, and Really, what that causes is a disconnect between the designed API and the runtime API. So the designed API, the way it's intended to be built, what's documented, and the runtime API, which is how it actually works, right? And so potentially, we could run into differences over time. We could have deprecated APIs or changed APIs. Um, they're called zombie APIs. We could have things that are undocumented, and so we we would call those shadow APIs. And then really the, the you know, shame, shame would be adding and breaking changes to something. So obtaining that open API spec without the code instrumentation or modifying existing workloads 
causes these disconnects between what was the intended purpose of the designed API versus the runtime. Any questions okay. there, Kareem? <laughs> no, this this actually is pretty pretty clear. I do want to talk about the architecture a little bit. Um, we'll skip over some of those Gartner challenges, but um, ultimately what API Clarity is addressing are those concerns uh, that we talked about earlier. So no, you ultimately don't need to provide any code changes uh, for your use of your app. We're not injecting anything. Um, we're not adding uh, code trackers to your code. Um, this is something that happens um, outside of your code, and I'll show you the architecture in a minute. We're going to capture that API traffic. We're able to actually reverse engineer the open API spec from what is being observed in the interactions, which is really uh, cool. And then we can actually, if we have access to a, an existing open API spec, we can upload that and have them merge, or not have them merge, I should say, uh, but have them compare and do a diff to find out where those uh, shadow APIs are, those zombie APIs, those breaking changes have been introduced. And there's a UI dashboard up there so we can see everything happening. And then real quick, this is what it looks like. Um, these are all within microservices managed architectures. So um, these are container-based apps that are running in Kubernetes. Varying flavors of Kubernetes can be supported here. Um, actually, the demo I'm running is using something called K3D on my Mac. For any of the pods that are actually running, there is something called an Envoy proxy that's offered by the Istio service mesh that reports into how that app or that portion of the application is working and the interactions that are occurring. And it feeds through those proxies um, to the open API spec engine and gives us the information that we're um, looking for, which is how the APIs are between these microservices are interacting with each other. So that's the architecture. So basically it's a tool that, and I'm, I'm dumbing it down here, that sniffs, sniffs out my APIs and looks at at it from you know what's available, what's not available, kind of like um, like the packet tracer. Yep. Uh, pa well, packet tracers um, or, no, or packet Wireshark tracer, uh, or something. Yeah, Wireshark. Wireshark sorry. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. That's actually the that was actually kind of the the tagline internally to talk about it, uh, so people could wrap their heads around it from the network. Uh, engineer ops person um, saying that it is a wire shark for APIs, uh, essentially. Um, so yes, you can totally think about it that way, Kareem. Okay, cool. All right, let's deep yeah. dive. Yeah, yeah. So it is an open source uh, tool that's available to you guys today. You can head out to uh, the uh, link provided on the bottom there, and it will kick you over to the instructions to uh, set it up and add it to your applications. Um, but we already have a, a sample application up and running. Um, it is a classic uh, cloud native uh, application called the Sock Shop. <laughs> and so you can see here, I have my Sock Shop up and running. Um, I thought this was funny. The first time I kind of played around with the Sock Shop app, which is, it's kind of a well-known app within this space. Uh, the first socks that come up are these holy socks. <laughs> For some reason, I found that very <laughs> that amusing, kind of funny. especially the fact that they're 99 uh, US dollars. <laughs> um, and so uh, we have uh, this Sock Shop running, you know, it's, basically runs like any retail site that we would be we would be looking at. Um, and so any interaction that I have, whether it be through the catalog or whether I add an item to my cart, going to my cart, if I do a registration and log in, let's do a quick registration. There are basically API calls going back and forth. There's basically API calls going back and forth, yep. And that go through the login process. The cool thing that's going on behind the scenes, Kareem, is API Clarity is tracking all of this information and how the APIs are being called back and forth. And so we see these cool graphs that are being generated, the most used APIs, we can see the traffic back and forth. So you can see the demo that I just did where I was putting in information and figuring that out, um, the actual API calls, the status code for those. And then um, you can see this little button here called the reconstructed spec diff. So I had asked uh, previous to this demo that um, API Clarity do a construction of the API for catalog, user, and carts. And it was able to um, generate a reconstruction and build out a specific documentation for that API call so that I could match it up. Now, I unfortunately don't have the definition of the open API spec to match it up against, but if we had one and we were to go into those calls, we can actually see the spec diff and arguably we would have the, the you know, left-hand side here with the actual schema and then what is actually detected. And it'll do the matchup and say, hey, this isn't, 
that right now it's saying, you know, you don't have a match. And so the diff is, is showing us that error. But if we had one, we could say, oh man, that, you know, this image URL is coming back a little bit different than we expected. And, um, you know, we probably need to adjust the documentation or update the implementation uh, to match that. So, so it's really tying into the entire health of the API. So tell me something, Matt, uh, as I was looking at the architecture, so you have an application, and the application is your sock shop, right? How, mm -hmm. where does API Clarity live? Does it have an agent within your app itself that listens to these calls or how is it detecting like that you added a car or you made an API to, you know, to click on the catalog? So uh, it's that dotted line here that we see in the architecture from the Envoy proxies that are part Envoy of the proxies. Istio service. So it's basically okay. tapping into the service mesh that is managing the cluster and the interaction within the clusters. Got it. Which is pretty yeah. cool that actually now, does that mean I could actually look at API Clarity from an application perspective and the API calls, and then if I'm seeing also detecting some errors on my API, then I could tie it into App Dynamics and and get that observability with what's going on with my APIs as well. Yeah, Is you certainly could. Um, yeah, you might see an instance of an API call um, acting funny or data not working, and you can um, then tie that to the real time interaction of what is going on with the application in app dynamics so it's adding another layer of visibility into what is happening so we can say you know everything's looking good uh, let's take a look into api clarity and make sure that um, you know even though it's looking good in app d that our api calls are actually giving us back the information that we're expecting um, even though right. we might be getting a bunch of 200 okays you know it's nice to know that the actual data is formatted properly that our application is consuming it as expected yeah, this is this is pretty powerful and awesome, and I, I love the fact that it's uh, that's open sourced, um, which is which is great. So tell us a little bit about resources. Where can I go to get it? What's on DevNet for me? Um, before we wrap up here, Matt. Um, so this is kind of just the the tip of the iceberg um, for what we're going to be offering. Um, you know, you can expect the classic DevNet treatment of. Uh, Learning experiences, documentation, blog posting about it. So we're gonna, you're gonna see this uh, tool talked about pretty regularly. We don't have a ton out there yet, but it's coming. And so uh, stay tuned for more information on that. Awesome, Matt. Thank you for taking the time to putting uh, this together for us, uh, Snackers. Thank you for joining us on this episode of DevNet Snack Minute. Join us next time, please.